All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. I would like to do two example problems for you regarding acceleration. So find this paper in your notebook. I'm going to do example A and example B, and then I'm going to ask for you to do practice A and practice B on your own for tonight. So example A, a police car accelerates from 90 miles per hour to 110 miles per hour in 10 seconds to chase a bank robber. What was the police car's acceleration? All right, so we can see here that the police car, his acceleration is our unknown variable. And I see this information from 90 miles per hour. That means he was starting with an initial speed of 90 miles per hour. And the police car went to a final speed of 110 miles per hour. And the time it took for that change to occur was 10 seconds. So what equation ties all these variables together? It is the equation for acceleration. Acceleration equals the change the change in velocity over the time interval for that change. And delta V is V final minus V initial over the time interval. So if you plug these numbers in, we get 110 minus 90 miles per hour occurring over a period of uh, 10 seconds. over 10 seconds. So the change in velocity was 20 miles per hour over 10 seconds equals a rate of change of 2 miles per hour per second. One thing I'd like to point out here is that VI stands for V initial and we learned about something that we were calling instantaneous velocity, the velocity of an object at an instant in time. And here we're all talking about instantaneous velocities. The velocity is constantly changing as the police car goes from 90 miles per hour to 110 miles per hour. So we are looking at VI as the initial instantaneous velocity and V final as the final instantaneous velocity. All right, so let's take a look now at example B. Going to scroll, scroll down here. A drag racer accelerates 23 miles per hour per second for four seconds from rest. What is his final velocity? So I'm going to write down what we're being asked. What is his final velocity? So v final equals question mark. I'm going to look through the problem to see what relevant information are we given. Accelerates 23 miles per hour per second. So I'm going to write that down as a given piece of information. 23 miles per hour per second. I also see 4 4 seconds so I notice that that is the time interval. And from rest. From rest meaning the initial velocity equals 0. Now the equation that unites all these variables is again our acceleration equals v fi final minus v initial over delta t. However, we're going to rearrange this equation. We can multiply both sides by delta t. Let me choose a different color pen here. So we'll multiply the right side by delta t and the left side by delta t. Now our delta t's are going to go away on the right side and what we'll be left with is a different form of the equation where we have v final minus v initial equals acceleration times time interval. And now we can do one more algebraic manipulation. We can add vi to both sides to get v final by itself. So Let's do that. So
So V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time interval. Now we can plug in our values. Now we have a good form for this equation. Our VI is zero. And we're going to be multiplying times 23 miles per hour per second times 4 seconds. Notice how the seconds cancel out. This seconds here cancels with these seconds on the bottom. And we get 0 plus 23 miles per hour, which equals 23 miles per hour. So I'd like to point out a few things here. This part of the equation, acceleration times a time variable, is our change in speed. So the final speed equals the initial speed plus the change in speed. Oftentimes, we're dealing with situations where the initial velocity is zero. So um, oftentimes, what you're doing to find a final velocity is just multiplying acceleration times rate of change, sorry, acceleration times time interval. Um, and that's it. I would like you to do practice A and practice B on your own, and um, we will check your answers tomorrow. So thanks for tuning in, scholars.